Hi guys and welcome back to part 3 of building my flux axial generator. In the previous two parts I have shown you how I got my magnets and how I start designing the coils. Then in the second part I start explaining how a uh, three phase, two phase and one phase configurations of the coils will act in this uh, axial flux generator I am trying to build. Now as you can see here I got all the bobbins ready meaning all the stators are fully done. This is uh, one side of the stator which is holding currently only six coils and then we got the other three stators which is holding 12 coils, six on each side. These they are configured as a monophase. As I told you in the previous part I will go with this route. Now it's time to assemble them by just moving them firstly on the side and bringing the frame support and firstly what we have to do is to add a 608 bearing the 3d printer support which is holding the entire uh, mechanical assembly but now here is a catch depending of uh, if you want to use the generator to be upright or on its side let's say on this way you have to change this bearing uh, for my configuration it will be placed on its side so it will not be standing upright that's why you have to change this bearing to a thrust bearing, which I don't have to show you one. But it's looking something like this. Anyway, after you have this bearing installed, we can start adding the first pair of coils. They will just be going like so, the generator frame. And then I will be following that up with some, with a small washer, like so. And then add the magnetic router, the first one, because I have four to install and insert it in the 3D model, like so. And after we make sure that it's freely moving, we can start adding the second row of bobbin, one which is holding 12 coils, and insert it as well, the generator frame, like so. And now, as you can see, it doesn't stay in its place. And that will be tackled in just a moment. For that, I have to go on one to the design and design some small brackets. And after slicing it in Cura and print them, Here I have them. Then I just got some screws and bolted them together. After the small brackets have been screwed, the only thing I have to do is just to adjust them a bit, making sure that the router is freely moving and is somewhat close to the coils without hitting them. Moving along, it's time to add the second magnetic router, which is holding six microwave oven magnets. And like I showed you in the previous two parts, they have to be placed and the router north south north south kind of like this basically by the way this is a small tester i have shown you on the previous video how to do it this is just to show the polarity of the magnets and let's install the second router with magnets and for doing that we need a bolt two washers so firstly we insert the bolt followed by the two washers like so and then the magnetic router as well it can be just through it in the 3d part and then we follow that up with another set of washers and a bolt now with the second uh, magnetic rotor installed we can add the third row of bobbins and connect them as well now depend how you do your wiring this part will be a bit simple for you and after the bobbins are in the place we get the brackets secure the bobbins now these brackets are for two reasons the first reason is to hold the 3d model which is holding the bobbins so the stators and the second reason is for making the frame a bit rugged meaning that when the generator is spinning it will help making the frame more stable and a quick spin that is show that the magnets doesn't touch the bobbins that's perfect still some tweaks will be done at the end when all the coils will be installed now let's get the another bolt another two washers which by the way one is smaller and one is bigger one is 10 million diameter and one is 12 million diameter and add them as well now we install the third magnetic router as well it's quite simple
with the third row turning spray we see that it's turning freely without any wobble that's good then i shall add the fourth data root coils and lock them in them place with the small 3d printed brackets and move on by adding the fourth router and then following that up with the last row of bobbin and connect them together and here we have it and now with the generator connected to the dvm i start to turn it and as you can see we are generating about over 3 volts at a slight rotation and if i go a bit faster let's say a bit more we are generating more and it's climbing we got 9 volts and i think soon then we get 10 and a half volts and soon i think i will be getting closer to 12 and indeed we are generating over 12 volts now if you are wondering why it's wobbling so much that is because my table isn't flat and also i have realized that i don't need a flywheel for this generator we can see that i'm generating some voltage that's perfect now if i get my drill and place it on its first gear and connect it to the generator and we try to spin it and we start it i'm generating about 12 volts which still is decent at a slight rotation but now if i flip it on the second gear and as well started we can see that i am generating over 38 volt that's amazing and also i should show you how much current does this axial generator is produced at this current state so after setting the dvm on current mode as well ac i start turning first on the first gear of the drill and that come out to about 400 milliamps which is not much but now on the second gear on the fastest set well it's producing about one amperes which is not so much for this construction i may say but you have to remember that my axial fluctuator doesn't have any core meaning that the, the windings they do not have an iron core to get more inductance because like i told you this generator is working on the same principle as a wind turbine but i think i can improve it a bit further why i'm saying that because well i see that i still got some headroom onto the generator so i went as well and I reprinted another tater support and another rotor then i got more microwave oven transformers and cut them with the grinder prior to salvage the primary coils from them then i did more coils for another stator this time consisting as well of 12 coils six on each side i went and i populate the magnetic rotor with the last magnet and as well giving it some encouragement prior to secure it using some super glue after that i leave it to settle outside and meanwhile i went ahead and installed the stator with the coils and do all the wiring after the super glue was settled i took the magnetic rotor and installed it as well on the frame then add the last stator this time with six coils the generator can go through another test now keep in mind the generator is consisting of a stack assembly meaning that i got five rotors with six magnets each which is coming to a total of 30 magnets which is quite much 15 microwaves over <laughs> and as well i got a total of 60 coils as well for my point that for building the generator I had to dismantle over 20 microwaves because not all of them had the same type of magnets inside of them. After adding the last stator and as well the last magnetic rotor, now it's time to give it another go. In the first gear, the generator is producing about 14.5 volts, which is a slight increase. And also, if I switch it on the second gear, it's producing about 48 volts, which I'm quite amazed by it. And also, let's check the current. The current on the first gear is about 420 to 430 milliamps, which is a slight increase. And also on the second gear, from the typically one amp, I'm getting about 120, 150 milliwatts, which is still a slight increase, which to be fair for this construction isn't much. But let's proceed further with the test. For the first test, I'll be using this 12 volts auto car lamp, which is rated at about 5.5 watts. And as you can see, it's lighting it 
with T. And also, I throw the oscilloscope into the mix to check the waveform. And as you can see, the waveform looks good. The generator seems to have some potential in it. Now I'll be getting my hands on a 60 volt amp toroidal transformer, which will be used to power a typical 5.5 watts LED light. And after giving a go with both of them in junction, we can see that the generator is powering them with ease. Well, let's check the voltage on the transformer output to see its voltage because the secondary of this transformer is rated at 24 volt which I may end up modifying it in the future if by removing the small 5.5 watts auto car lamp we see that we're getting an increase in voltage which is approaching closely to 220 to 250 volt which is quite good I may say but I am diverting back onto the test you see by adding it and removing the small load the generator is increasing its output. This is showing that the generator doesn't have so much power. Because I have to emphasize that this generator doesn't have an iron core for getting more inductance. But perhaps in a future video, I may end up adding one. And here is come the part where I have to say goodbye. This project was quite interesting. And also updates regarding this project will be further added as they come out. I hope I will see you all in the next video. Till then, have a good day and thank you very much for watching. Yeah.